you guys have met me before. Uh, I'm going to do a talk on 3D collision detection. Uh, this is geared towards an audience who, who isn't uh, like it, are, are, who aren't experts in geometry. Uh, so 3D collision detection for people who aren't math, who don't have doctorates in geometry or some type of <laughs> math. <laughs> okay. So collision detections are very important. Uh, here you see uh, in a game uh, a dragon's head is somehow popping out of the ground, um, and this is due to a fault in the, the collision detection, or it's just them not caring about this specific bug in the game and deciding that this will never happen or will rarely happen and it's okay to keep in the game. Um, but uh, collision checks are important because it makes the game feel real. Uh, it makes the game a competitive game competitive. If you don't have accurate collision detection and something where you need to you know, shoot someone in the head, shoot someone in the torso, and if that matters and that's not accurately uh, calculated, then players get very frustrated. So it's very important for games. It's one of the biggest challenges when you're doing uh, game development. So just to learn 3D, I'm going to start with 2D. Uh, and here's an example of how you do 2D collision with uh, axis-aligned bounding boxes. So that, and that's just a fancy way of saying like a, like a square that whose who's x and y axis is the top left corner. And also, it's not being rotated. It's not like swinging around or anything. It's just like stuck, it's a square, it's not rotated. This is how you do collisions for that. And it's a very simple statement. Uh, you have two rectangles and you're essentially checking to see if this corner has entered inside of uh, this side or, or essentially between these two spots. Checking to see if they're entered between there. And if it did, uh, you do something, you, well, you can do a collision response. So if a collision detection, if you've collected, detected a collision, you can do a collision response, which can be really anything you want. And in this scenario, what it does is it runs a hypothetical scenario where it says, okay, in this next state where the game, where this player tried to move in here with this, this velocity, its position now changed to inside of here, um, it'll run some calculations, it'll say yes, that, that is a collision, and then inside of here, you can run a different function that's a collision response. And the collision response here is they calculate a correction. So they say, okay, so this is maybe like five pixel difference um, of the y-axis, and this is probably like an eight pixel difference of, uh, of the x-axis. And it, it returns that value, and it will uh, correct it so it's snug, right and fit, right where it's supposed to be. Um, you don't have to do that calculation. Uh, unless your game really requires like a player to like get in the corner. <laughs> you, you can just kind of keep it here and just tell it randomly at some point if the player keeps holding this way, it'll eventually fill that gap in, but that's, we don't have to talk about that. Um, here's how you do closures for a circle. Also, pretty simple. Uh, circle over in circle and an axis line box with boxes. Both pretty simple to do. Um, this one, you're essentially just checking the radiuses, uh, see if um, it's greater than the distance between the centers, if both the radiuses combined. Um, and things start to get really crazy once you start using two different shapes. And here is an example of how you do an axis line bounding box squared and a circle together. And I'm not going to go through all this code line by line. But basically, um, it's finding the distance between the center of the circle and the corner. And it's trying to see if the circle center, it, it, or it also calculates like plus the radius. This orange box is the, uh, the rectangle or square's width and height plus, or divided by two because they're starting in the center in this example divided by two, the, the, the xy divided by two, plus the radius of the circle. So you're already pre-calculating the radius of the circle inside of this box. So you can just check, is the center of the, of the circle inside of this orange zone right here? And that works. That, that'll get you to this line. Also, the green area is 
essentially an area where the circle is definitely not colliding with the square, so they don't even run the rest of the code. Because they know it's just, if it's in here, it's just definitely not something you need to worry about. There's one flaw at, if you just wrote this code, and it's the corner here. And because uh, this, this is essentially right here, that is not being checked. Because when you're adding the radius here, you're adding the radius here, but you're not really checking for this area right here. So you have to do some uh, weird, like you have to generate another circle and check that circle with uh, the circle coming in. And that's what you get this right here. And yeah, so the, I'm not gonna go into details exactly how that's working. So here's an issue with 2D collision detection, also an issue with 3D collision detection. And it's pretty self-explanatory here. This is a very good image that describes what's happening. And it's basically, games will run on a delta time. So like the time since the last loop will calculate, will change exactly how far that, uh, that x and y value changed. Um, and in this case, it just kind of skipped over it because the, maybe the, the game lagged for like a, a little bit. And the last loop was a second ago. So it'll times it by a lot because typically it's, it's much smaller. It's going to be uh, like point something seconds. So it'll actually skip because the x, y value completely jumped and it checked to see if it was colliding with anything here and it wasn't. So how do you solve that? You use something called ray casting, which keep in mind what, how ray casting works because this can be, become, very example, become very important when we do an example with 3D collisions. So in this case, it, it runs the hypothetical scenario where uh, this is the second position, but then it also runs another scenario where, or another check to see a ray cast in the direction of the second hypothetical position and sees if that ray collides with anything. And if it does, then that was not a legal move. Um, and that's really the best solution. That don't, just, uh, I don't know about that one. So here's just another example of just collisions going wrong. A grid is a great way to essentially bypass collisions. Um, you can see the code here. This is like the simplest code you're going to get for something collision. This is an example of Pokemon. And I'm not sure if this is actually how Pokemon did it, but you see all of the grass has like a, or all of the, this not the tall grass, the short grass, <laughs> don't want to confuse you guys, uh, was as a three. Um, which in this, in this scenario kind of means that it's collidable would be false. And then there's also A's, which would mean collidable would be true. I don't know if you can really see that too well. And there's also ones in here, which is probably another uh, type of, so this grid X, Y will probably have an object in it with a bunch of different information. And a one probably means like it is collidable only under a certain scenario. And, but, and that is if the player is surfing on a Pokemon, then, <laughs> then one means go ahead. But if not, then, then that is not a move. So basically you just check. Uh, and the, but the, the cons to this is that your player can really only be like in like a little square at a time. So like it really makes collisions really simple. Um, but if you're trying to like have a game where people are like stabbing each other, like different places, like the legs, it's just not, you're just not picking the right way to detect collisions. So, okay. okay. <laughs> so th this is, uh, this is voxel, um, which I learned is like a term for like 3D grids. Um, and it's just much, this is a 3D voxel uh, collision detection. Same thing, just add a Z value to that. Here are examples of 3D collision boxes. And you'll see here's a box, here's a sphere, and here's a capsule. A capsule is typically used for a player object. You'll have a capsule collider. Um, it's just kind of like the shape of a human. And here's a mesh, which I'm going to kind of show you how you do mesh collisions, but not, not really. <laughs> so th yeah, he here we go. So this is how you do, this is like the most accurate form of, of 3D collision detection is triangle mesh collisions. And this is how you do it. And I really, if you're trying to do something that accurate, do not do your collisions yourself. Because you, this is essentially describing how Unity is doing its mesh collisions. And you just don't want to do that. Because people have already built tons of things for that. Um, so just don't, don't do, if you're trying to do something that accurate, don't try to do triangle mesh collisions yourself, please. Unless you're a PhD in geometry and math. <laughs>
Um, and the best way to go about doing your own collisions in 3D is something called ray casting, which they used before to check the difference between uh, those two positions. And basically, I'll just show a quick example so you guys can understand what's going on. So ray casting, basically, it just casts a ray uh, off of each of the um, this cube's vertices. So the ray's getting shot that way. Boom, boom, rays are getting shot everywhere. And they're actually all from one position. So if the position of the cube is right here, there's a ray casting that way, it's ray casting that way, it's ray casting that way, and all the, all the vertices. And you'll see in the top left corner, it'll tell us when the cube hits the, the when the red cube hits the blue cube. You see, boom, it hit. Um, and what it's checking is, is the distance between this uh, smaller than the distance between this and its vertice? And that's assuming that this is where the x, y, z position of the cube is. So it's casting a ray, shooting it out to see how far the collision is. It has that information. Yeah, uh, so these are a simple way to do collisions yourself in 3D, um, but also not that accurate, because look what's happening here. It's not hitting anything else. See, it's inside of there, but it's not hitting it. So uh, it's because the ray, no ray, if you think about it, no ray is actually being shot out and touching the blue uh, square rectangle. So yeah, that is, here's just a, it's not too much code, um, but it's definitely something to look into on your own time um, if you are interested in doing 3D collisions. Or sometimes you have a collision engine plus you're doing ray casting to solve some other issues in your game. So yeah, that's a bad collisions. Yeah, this is just to review. Um, yeah, and here is some further learning if you're interested. Thank you very much. Oh, yes, questions. But yes, thank you.